number 39, we want to use the first derivative test to find all local maxima and minima for the function f of x equals x squared plus 3 on the interval from negative 3 to 2. All right. So uh, we're going to use the first derivative test. And the first derivative test is wanting me to do the same thing that I was doing when I was trying to find where is a function increasing and where is it decreasing. I want to find the critical points. I want to put those critical points on a number line. I want to test the intervals to see where is that first derivative positive, where is that first derivative negative. And once I've found that, I can use that information to figure out where I have local maxima and local minima. Okay, so let's go through it one step at a time. The very first thing I want to do for a problem like this is I just want to take the derivative. Okay, so let's take the derivative of the function. This function is an easy one to take the derivative of. I take f prime of x, and in this case it's just 2x. Okay, so <clears throat> easy derivative. And now I want to know where are the critical points. So the critical points of a function is where that thing is equal to 0 or undefined. I can see right now this thing is never undefined, so it's just where it's equal to 0. So I set it equal to 0, and I get 0 is 2x, so x must be 0. And this is my critical point, just at x equals 0. Now I can put that critical point on a number line. Notice my critical point is in my interval that I'm interested in. I don't necessarily need these arrows here because I'm just interested in this thing between negative 3 all the way up to 2. Okay, so now I test some points in between negative uh, 3 and 0 and in between 0 and 2 to see if this thing is increasing or decreasing on that interval. So I want to test these points. Remember, this is a first derivative, uh, and I want to test something between negative 3 and 0. Well, how about negative 1? So I take negative 1, and I plug it into the first derivative. If you plug it into the original function, that doesn't mean anything to us. You have to plug it into the first derivative. So I want to plug in negative 1 into the first derivative, and I would just get 2 times negative 1, which, of course, is negative 2. And what I really care about is that it is negative. So I put negatives up here to remind me of that. And now I'm going to plug in something from over here. How about 1? So I plug f prime of 1, which is 2 times 1, which is positive 2. So everything over here in that interval is positive. Now, remember, positive means going up. Negative means going down. So negative, I'm just going to draw in some arrows, means going down. So I'm going to put a downward arrow from left to right. And positive means going up, so I'm going to put an upward arrow from left to right. And you can see, if it's going down and then it's going up, what must happen at this point? Is it going to be a maximum or is it going to be a minimum? Well, if you're going down and then you're going up, this guy must be a minimum. And that is what is happening there. We get a minimum at x is equal to 0. So we don't get any maximums in this case, uh, at least not local maximum. And so it, the answer to this problem, if I'm finding all the local maxima or minima, I just get 1. I get a local minimum at x equals 0. So f has a local minimum at x equals 0, and it doesn't have any local maximum, and that's my answer.